and I welcome you back to the Brennick Channel. Today we are talking about the biggest earthquake to ever hit the world since the Richter scale was invented. If you really like this content, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much, and we'll be right back. Stick around. Let me set the scene. On May 22, 1960, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded struck approximately 100 miles off the coast of South Chile. It occurred in the afternoon at 3.11 local time and lasted for approximately 11 minutes. During the quake, the needle of the size monitor literally went flying after reaching an 8.5. The machine broke, so there really wasn't a real number for this earthquake. Later on, they approximated the earthquake to be anywhere between a 9.4 and a 9.6. I've seen conflicting reports where some people say 9.4, some people say 9.5, and other people say 9.6. We are going to roll over to Lynn and find out more about the Richter scale. Lynn? Thanks, Chip. Charles Richter was born in 1900 in Overpeck, Ohio. He moved to Los Angeles, California with his family in 1909. There he graduated from Los Angeles High School and went on to receive his undergraduate degree from Stanford University in 1920. In 1928, he began work on his PhD in theoretical physics from the California Institute of Technology. However, before he finished, he took a position at the Carnegie Institute of Washington working with Dr. Bino Gutenberg. It was here he became fascinated with seismology, the study of earthquakes and the waves they produce in the earth. The California the California Institute of Technology wanted to publish regular reports on earthquakes in Southern California, creating a pressing need for a system of measuring the strength of earthquakes. In 1935, Richter and Dr. Gutenberg created the Richter scale for measuring the magnitude or strength of an earthquake. Prior to the development of the Richter scale, the only way to measure earthquakes was the Mercalli scale, which was developed in 1902 by Italian priest and geologist Giuseppe Mercalli. The Mercalli scale classified earthquakes from 1 to 12, essentially depending on how buildings and people responded to the quake. An example, if the quake simply caused a chandelier to sway, it may be ranked a 1 or 2 on the Mercalli scale. However, if a quake destroyed large buildings and created panic in a crowded city, it was ranked a 10. The obvious problems with this system is that it relied on some objective measures such as building construction or how accustomed the local population was to this type of crisis. Contrary to popular belief, the Richter scale is not based on a scale of 10. That is to say, this scale does not stop at 10. The Richter scale is actually limitless. Many believe the Richter scale is a physical machine, when it actually is mathematic scale applied to seismograph readings to determine the magnitude or strength of earthquakes. It's important to remember the Richter scale measures the strength of the earthquake. It does not indicate the level of damage caused by the quake. An earthquake in a heavy populated area can cause far more damage than an earthquake of the same magnitude in a remote location. The Richter scale has a baseline of zero, which is caused by any event that caused a seismograph needle to move for one hundred thousandth of an inch laterally along a seismograph. In order for humans to even notice the activity, it would have to be 1,000 times that, or a magnitude 3. Studies suggest events rating 4.5 or greater likely happen several thousand times per year, while great earthquakes measuring 8.0 or higher likely occur somewhere in the world every year. To help put the Richter scale in perspective, here are a few comparisons. An earthquake measuring 2.5 on the scale would be the equivalent of 5.6 metric tons of TNT explosive. An earthquake measuring 7.0 on the scale is the equivalent of 32 megatons of TNT. And finally, an earthquake measuring 9.5 is the equivalent of 178 gigatons of TNT. The damage an earthquake of this magnitude could potentially cause is unthinkable. Back to you, Chip. Thanks, Lynn. This quake caused a massive tsunami. The resulting tsunami affected southern Chile, Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, eastern New Zealand, southeast Australia, and the Aleutian Islands, and not to mention that it hit all the way up by LA along the coast of the Pacific. The inner piece of this magnitude crust earthquake was near Lumaco, approximately 570 kilometers, 350 miles south of Santiago, 
with Valvedia being the most affected city. The tremor caused localized tsunamis that severely battered the Chilean coast with waves up to 25 meters, 82 foot. Could you imagine an 11 minute earthquake if you were on the coast followed by an 82 foot tsunami wave? Wow, that is just insane. The wave continued across the Pacific first hitting the Pitcairn Islands with a 40 foot wave. Next up, New Zealand. Observation of the tsunami were reported at more than 120 locations in New Zealand. Waves there were 3 to 5 meters high. The most affected locations across the whole eastern seaboard of New Zealand. Largest surge generally occurred within 12 to 15 hours after first arrival, some within 2 to 4 hours. In most affected areas, houses, roads, sheds, and paddocks were inundated. Bridges, fences, and sheds damaged and stocked were killed. The tsunami reached the Australian East Coast around 14 hours after the earthquake, slightly before it reached Hawaii. The waves reached the Hawaiian Islands in about 15 hours. Hilo had over 1,600 homes destroyed, 185 people missing or dead. A day later, an 18-foot wave slammed into Japan. The death toll and Monterey loss arising from this widespread disaster are not certain. Various estimates of the total number of fatalities from the earthquake and tsunami have been published, raising between 1,000 and 6,000 people killed. Different sources have estimated monetary costs ranging from U.S. $400 million to $800 million or $3.46 to $6.9 billion in 2019 adjusted for inflation. So the moral of this story is a 9.5, 9.6, or all the way up to a 10 or beyond, as Lynn stated. We never want to see that in our life. Hopefully we never see it. Hopefully our kids can Kids never see it, but anything's possible and anything can keep going higher and higher. People get this illusion that a 10.0 stops, but it really don't, and the destruction can be worldwide. With that being said, you guys have a blessed day. Thanks for stopping by the Dobrynik channel, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless and peace.